Hello there my friends, I hope y'all all having a great day today. It's Doug here. Just Doug and Doug alone. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hey, uh, I wanted to show you a tool that you could use for sanding that wasn't really made for that purpose. And one of the most detailed power sanders you can do. Uh, as far as mobility and being able to work a small object around the sanding area, it works wonderful for me. Now, don't get me wrong, your detail sanding is best done by hand. Um, we could get into all the little tricks with a round pole and the sandpaper to a uh, triangle-shaped file with the sandpaper wrapped around it and the sandpaper folded in half, and I could go on forever. But for the initial power sanding and detail sanding, depending on the grid of the paper, scroll saw can work wonderful for that. So let me show you how I do that, my friends. Alrighty? And great to be here with you as always. Hey my friends, I've been asked several times how I made this pattern and although that's not what this video is about I'll give you a quick rough down on it before I do a full tutorial video on it. This is about how to do sanding with your scroll saw. Alrighty. Guys, this wood is called Pink Flame is what this is. I acquired quite a bit of it about 15 years ago and I recently have done some research into getting some more and it cannot be found. Um, at least I haven't, let me put it that way. I've been told they won't export it out of the country anymore, out of South America somewhere. And Pink Flame is a beautiful wood. It just some, has some of the most phenomenal grains in it you could ever use. And to make that little sunset, these are were for a different one, but it's basically just that wedge shape angle cut to make your full 360. And guys, it was 15 years ago. These are some scraps left over. I forget the angles. Like I said, that's not the purpose of this video. I just wanted to show you the wood. And I've got it a quarter inch thick. Okay? And the way I created the flames on it, meh. Alright, I'll show you. All right, let me draw a pattern on here for you guys. Not. There we go. One set of flames. There you go, my friends. I went ahead and cut two for you. And the pattern goes on and on and on. The only thing that needs to be consistent here is that nothing is consistent. You can draw it out with a pencil to see if you like the way it looks, but uh, I don't. Anyway, but well, I'll take that back. About all that is critical is that the meeting points where you're going to go around and complete your circumference. Your scroll saw work stops at that point all the time, all the way around. Full circle, half circle, and I did a full circle also. I'll see if I can show you all a picture of that. You might have seen it in some of my previous videos. This video is about sanding, so let's sand. Guys, what you got here is a bag of scrap sandpaper. Any of my belt sanders are... are um, yeah, belt sanders, all different kinds, and disc sanders, you always have real good unused edges on them. So I cut them into strips, three-eighths of an inch wide. And uh, most scroll saw blades are all right at about five inches long. So I cut them five inches long. Uh, all different grits. Oh, works out real good for me. You can hook them up in the saw. I know this ain't going to show up on camera because this is the world's finest scroll saw blade here. Come on. Well, yeah, yeah, I think you can see it right there. What this blade is in the video that's not about using scroll saw work, this is what's called a spiral scroll saw blade. 
The blade is spun in the middle so that you can cut far wooden backwards without having to make tight turns. They are my favorite of all blades. Uh, that's not what was in the scroll saw at the moment. The last time the scroll saw was used, my daughter wanted to do a little rough cutting. So she would have broke this blade instantly. Uh, they're very fragile to use. You have to be very gentle and very fragile with them. But they are great blades. What I've got here, guys, are two little strips of my sandpaper. This is medium sienna acrylate glue. C and A glue, as we like to call it. And I'm going to put a little very thin strip down the middle. Move it out of the way just to hay. Some activator on the other side. Now I have a two sided sanding belt five inches long. All right, my friends, let me tighten up the top here. Couldn't get y'all underneath there. A Little bit of tension. Now what I've got here, let me move the camera. I've got a one-sided piece of sandpaper, tightened it up in the first time. It can only sand the front part of me, not my, <laughs> not my finger, all right? just a one-sided piece all right guys like I was saying I have a single piece of sandpaper mounted in here now if you can see the sandpaper will flex Where are you going to get a piece of sandpaper into something that tight that's running power activated except on a scroll saw? Alright my friends, now I'm putting a double in there. The one you saw me glue up back to back. There we go, and I feel obligated to. And I wanted y'all to know I'm trying to show you how you can do this with your old sandpaper. But at most of the craft stores, the woodworking stores that is, they do sell them with these little pre-made plastic ends on them. Which would put the sandpaper facing farwood at you instead of sideways like I'm mounting it but by uh, cutting them into little strips and making your own well number one theirs are only one-sided and number two you gotta buy them you can cut up your own sandpaper and make them and you don't have to buy them little plastic in mounted right on there and I'm sorry I just happen to have some why I don't know that two sides on the sandpaper it'll go right through that cut doing both sides at the same time nice thing about two-siding the sandpaper it makes it tougher I'm gonna put it in a bind for you see if it holds up there we go There you go guys, and I didn't finish it, I just wanted you to see what you can do with the sanding on a scroll saw, for very fine detail sanding, it works wonderful for me, nice low sharp point, <laughs> you can really work yourself into some tight little spots for sanding guys, now you can do that by hand all day long too. And that's how I've got to finish all these little corners and spots. 
but for power sanding and getting into tight spaces and if you're as picky as me on some things It's a great way to get in there and sand them. See that and I can't do it where you can see me. Imagine all the hand sanding that got done on here. I flattened out all the tips on it and well let me show you. After that, I used the power sander to create waves in here, a little Dremel with a sanding head on it. Then guys, a whole lot of forever hand sanding, hand sanding, but that's how I got the rough piece to start with. Cut it out on the scroll saw, thinned it out on the sander, and then went to work carving and hand sanding, and then putting them together to make my soiko. To make my circle and here you go my friends that is how I made this carving right here many many years ago and it is old and dirty now but it was a lot of fun was gonna be a bed headboard to a bed but that's a long story why it didn't wind up that way. And this is probably as good as I can do without pulling out a ladder. Well, you know what? For you guys, I'll pull out the ladder. See that crackling in the finish? That's from 60 coats of lacquer. Get you a close look at it. That's all hand carved and done on the scroll saw. See the waves in it and the roundness on the corners? That's all done with the Dremel. And then hand sanded. I hope you all find that helpful. That little, being able to do that little tight of power sanding really works great for me on real small areas, especially doubling up on the sandpaper. And boy, does it make use of your broken sandpaper belts. Uh, your disc sander pads. Um, regular sandpaper, the, the thinness of the sheets, it doesn't hold up very well. If you take like an eight and a half by 11 piece of sandpaper and cut it up into strips, it'll tear up on you. It won't hold up in the scroll saw. But the thicker ones off of the belts, oh and God guys, the belts come in everything. From a little one inch by 42 inch sanders to eight inch by 48 inch, you know, belt sanders. The paper's a lot more durable for objects with moving sandpaper. And of course you just cut it up and use those little strips of it. And it works for me, my friends, and I sure hope it does for y'all too. Good to see you. I've got a little spare time now, so I've been in the shop getting caught up on a bunch of my videos and enjoying the heck out of myself. Y'all have fun, guys. Time to get back to work. See you in a bit now. Bye-bye.